Today we're in for probably one of the coolest video reports we've ev ever produced. As you can imagine, we're going to talk about the pilot watch, but no ordinary pilot watch. This is the Richard Mille RM039 that I have on the wrist, and let's go for a nice little flight. So I'm just going to change my glasses, because now we're entering into piloting mood. Off we go! Start up, uh, let's us remember the role of the pilot watch uh, in the watchmaking history because it played quite an important one. First of all, it's what kind of made the wristwatch popular uh, because pilots needed to read the time while they were flying and they had their big barber jackets, so the watches were set on top of uh, their jacket. The second function is obviously the most important one because it served as a real flight instrument. It allowed to calculate distances, for instance, uh, compared to the speed that you were indicated in your cockpit like you see here. left Geneva, we're flying above the Jura Mountains in the direction of Libreleu, home of the Rich and Mill main facility, and we're gonna make a nice little fly over this uh, nice little place. So I guess this is really the first time that this watch is flying over its birthplace. So now we're about to leave the top of the Jura Mountains to head into the Alps direction and this is going to be very spectacular, I promise you that. Let's now talk about this uh, RM039. This is really one hell of a crazy watch. It was first introduced and presented to us in 2012 but it necessitated four years of further development just to make it uh, as reliable as possible. And there's another parallel with the world of aviation because Having a prototype uh, uh, aircraft flying, this is quite something, but then to certify it, make it reliable, this is a totally other ball game, and that's where the complications start. The same thing here with watchmaking, because in this watch you have almost 1,000 mechanical components inside. But why is it a pilot watch? There's for a few reasons for that. Well, first of all, you have what we call an E6B computer. This is a mechanical slide rule that enables you to make a standard conversion. E6B yeah, it used to be like this. This is the old school version. It enables you to do many conversions and also helps you with your navigation. Let's say that we're going in, uh, we're heading in the 360 degrees uh, uh, direction, so full north. If we had a wind going against us precisely in the opposite angle, you would have to subtract the, the true airspeed to the wind speed and this will give you the actual ground speed. So this can be calculated with E6B, then if you have a wind coming from one direction to, or another, depending on also the latitude, if you have to correct your magnetic bearing, thing like that, enables you to really set the proper course that you have to fly uh, onto. One of the other nice uh, feature of this watch is that it lets you calculate density altitude. This is very important for small airplanes like this one. But let's go back to the more kind of classical, I would say, features and functions of this watch because it's nevertheless very complex. It is a, a tourbillon. It comes with a chronograph function with a flyback function, very important when you're uh, flying. But this watch has something that is really immensely cool. It has a timer function. So you can change from a chrono function to a timer function just uh, by using this uh, on-off button here. I put it on on and then I can just adapt okay how many minutes I want to the timer to count down for. If I press hard on this uh, button it will go from increment of five minutes to five minutes. If I do it slowly, it's one minute by one minute. Once it's uh, on the zero position, the indicator here will go on off again. And you have a function selector here on the crown, uh, and this selector now is on neutral, meaning that if I turn the crown, nothing is happening. If I press the function selector, uh, now it's in the W position, meaning winding position, which lets me wind the watch again and here you have a power indicator uh, that shows you how much you need to wind it again. Uh, this watch has a 70 hour uh, power reserve and if I continue with the functions, pressing it like this, 
Now this is the hands function and by uh, changing here it will let me change the time of the watch as you can see very easily. Okay. Now I press the function button again and this is on you for UTC and this is uh, lets you uh, set a second uh, time zone so it's a GMT function and here again if you see this is the GMT uh, uh, watch with a 24 hour uh, indicator so I press it again and this is back to neutral so nothing will happen while I'm uh, moving around the crowd Imagine to encase almost 1,000 components in a watch like this needs a bit of volume. I mean, it is a pretty big watch, but since it's made out of titanium, it's actually very light and convenient to wear. This is a limited edition of 30 timepieces, and I guess there's going to be 30 very happy person on this planet one day.